Yo, what's good, my friends? Welcome back to another episode on the pod. For today's episode, I've been sitting down with Martin Blattler, the owner of Chim Performance, for what has been a really cool interview. Because over the last two or three years, he has really been um, killing it with his online business, scaling it up like crazy, and he has also become a father. So he had very little time to take care of his own training and his nutrition, to cook and all that stuff. And nonetheless, the guy looks better today than ever before. It's absolutely crazy. So I just wanted to figure out how he's doing all of that, um, how his training has changed, how he's training today, and how his nutrition looks today, and yeah, basically how he's staying so fit. And then we also talked a little bit about what he thinks makes him so successful with his business, which also has been really cool. So yeah, I just learned a lot in this interview, really, really liked it. I'm sure you're gonna enjoy it as well. Um, if you do so, make sure to subscribe to the channel, it would really mean a lot to me. And if you were to write a review, that would just make me super, super happy because I'm always trying to learn more and make this podcast better and your feedback is just very valuable for that. And also if you just let me know what you like about it and how you like it, it also would make me very happy. So thank you so much for all of that and now enjoy the show. Hello guys, what's up? Welcome back to the podcast. Super pumped sitting here with Martin today. Martin is a long-term friend of mine. Uh, we have been in the military service together many years ago, so good old times. Um, and since then he has gone a long way into becoming a fitness coach, owner of Gym Performance, um, which always has been super inspiring to me, actually. You inspired me to start calisthenics when I was doing bodybuilding. Good many, to hear that, <laughs> awesome. <laughs> many years ago. Um, so yeah, it's super cool to have you on, um, but I wanna, don't want to take too much away, let Martin introduce uh -huh. himself. Martin, tell us about you and what you're doing today, how you got to where you be uh -huh. and all sure. that good stuff. So first and foremost, thanks for having me on the podcast, super pumped to be here. It's a pleasure, man. Although I'm a bit nervous, um, <laughs> I told him before because I'm not used to doing podcasts, but here we go. So my name is Martin, I'm the owner of Tim Performance, I'm a fitness enthusiast, I'm a father, of a two-year-old and I'm an online fitness coach. That's why I'm here. Yeah, exactly. So we want to talk a little bit about fitness and about your concepts of training and nutrition. Mm -hmm. um, but first, before we get into it, I'm um, just, how did it all grow your business from like, I mean, you have been doing informatics before and then you switched over. Mm -hmm. How was mm -hmm. that transition? Mm -hmm. How did you get into that? So it goes a long, long way back. Um, I think when we met, it was like, I don't know, eight years ago or so. Must be like Must be somewhere. almost 10. So the <laughs> thing is, I got into fitness at the age 16, I believe. And I just joined a local gym, started working out, wanted to get more muscles and stuff because I was super skinny, right? So this is what, what I did. Same story, right? <laughs> and obviously, yeah, it's, it's always like, in the end, it's insecurity that drives us to the gym, right? It's I guess, like, yeah. Yeah. So. This is what I did, went to the gym, I had no idea what I did at the time, but uh, I loved it like from the very first second. So I got hooked, like mm. literally I had no idea about nutrition, but I already worked out like five times a week. So <laughs> obviously it didn't grow or it didn't do anything, <laughs> but uh, I was just obsessed from the, from the very beginning. So um, I did just like, all different training methods. I tried out different diets, um, had experienced already a bit what is working and what not. Um, at this time, I was working in IT. After that, I wanted to go abroad. So my decision was Santa Monica. Um, as you know, there is the Muscle Beach, yeah, yeah. so a mecca of bodybuilding, but also a lot of people who work out at the beach. So I go there um, with the goal actually of learning English. What I did is probably three or four hours a day just working out. <laughs> so I went to school, I went to golf's gym to work oh, out so with cool. big guys. I run, I run into uh, The Rock, I run into 50 Cent and all this like, you know, no, that's super cool. Yeah, inspirational dudes. Um, after that, so I did some weight training. After that, I went to the beach and continued just working out. So um, I did calisthenics. Mm. This is where I got introduced to it. Um, for those who don't know what it is, just like training with your own body weight. And uh, obviously there in Santa Monica, there's a lot of people who are into fitness. It's really like, like it's huge fitness. Yeah, right? yeah. 
everyone it's, it's called muscle fitness. beach for a reason yeah yeah <laughs> and obviously there is um a lot of personal trainers a lot of yogis um <laughs> a lot of <laughs> you know just people who work in the fitness space and i found it super cool i wanted uh yeah to do something similar i got so inspired from those people so i said um it was 2014 at the time i said i want to do my own blog mm. so i called it into my life wrote the blogs rather than my programs like I remember one was like 100 pull-ups, different kind of pull-ups, <laughs> blah, blah, blah. And uh, obviously nobody <laughs> read it because <laughs> I wasn't nobody, but, but I wrote my well, That's how we all start, uh, right? Yeah. <laughs> so um, after I think seven months, I came back to Switzerland and I missed the beach because at the beach we used to work out, the yeah. sun was out, there's the rings at the beach, like the parallel bars where I learned the handstand and everything. Um, also, the the Iron Cross. Yeah, you, you could know, do it's it. Like, it's like advanced uh, gymnastics. School. I never I'm managed to get that. Super proud of that because usually, yeah, just it's so hard. Do that. Yeah. Do that. Um, so yeah, I'm back in in Switzerland, and I didn't want to go back to a regular gym because I was into calisthenics. Mm -hmm. So I joined CrossFit, and there I ran into you again. And, and I, <laughs> I knew you already from the army, and I saw you there. So um, yeah, we worked out in the same gym. That's a little bit I of think a it story. was there. Yeah, I I saw the videos of you when I was living in Portugal. Actually, uh, I don't know. It was you were in Muscle Beach and then already back at Limitless Power at that uh -huh, point? Uh -huh. And I was like, I want to do that shit too. That looks cool, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, and it's then pretty cool. I got I hopped onto the rings and I I mean I was just like doing the bodybuilding stuff uh, until then. Uh. I'm like, I couldn't do a muscle up. I, was, I felt like shit. <laughs> because it looks so cool, right? Yeah. It looks, and it looks, it looks, so, looks so easy. Fantastic. I'm like, I'm strong. I've been working out a while and I couldn't I do it. Do and I'm like, yeah, I gotta same. train it. <laughs> so, yeah, I you was hooked super, me. <laughs> I was super lucky. I had like professional gymnasts there in Santa Monica who yeah. worked out with me and showed me how to do stuff, right? So that's pretty cool. Uh, but I was the same way. I thought, man, I'm training so much, lifting so much weight, and now I cannot even do like <laughs> or whatever. That sucks. Um, but anyway, I was there in, in Limitless mm -hmm. Power, worked out um, with my own body weight. And obviously there are other people who are into CrossFit or just mm -hmm. working out. And they were impressed. They asked me, man, how do you do it? Probably you were one of them. <laughs> to teach me those skills. <laughs> yeah, right? exactly, exactly. Skills. How do you do it? And uh, this is where it all started, I guess. Like until this point, I just, just did it all for me. And I was just mm -hmm. obsessed with my performance and how to get better. Um, and the, I think this is the, the, the same year I probably also gave advice to other people because they were interested and mm -hmm. I didn't know much about coaching so I just said oh this is what I'm doing you can try it I don't know <laughs> whether it works or not right yeah, yeah. Just, this is what I do try it out and uh, for some reason um, other people had success with it so I just so it was gave, pretty I good it, yeah basically <laughs> copy what I did and yeah they they had success, um, got leaner, fitter, could do the skills. Um, and uh, everything else from there is history. So yeah, <laughs> like exactly. it's now seven years ago, right? And uh, um, I just did it as a side hustle for, for mm -hmm. many years. Um, and I think it was only last year when, when COVID hit. No, it was actually a little bit before. So as you know, I'm a father today. Yeah. Um, my daughter is half Swiss, half Brazilian. So this is a bit of a different story, but uh, my, my girlfriend, my fiance is Brazilian. We met in Australia. Yeah. So sorry for the twist now, but I have to explain this. <laughs> okay. Basically. So um, so we met in Australia. She visited me in Switzerland. I visited her, visited her in Brazil. Some months later, I got the call, said, okay, there's something on the way. <laughs> what now, right? <laughs> And uh, as you can imagine, I was lost because I had friends here, family here, my job here. What now? I had to make a decision and it was super chaotic, right? I had to make a decision within a few months, um, brainstormed, uh, like had a really, really hard time to process it. In yeah, the beginning yeah because it, yeah, obviously it was not planned, but then um, it was kind of shock probably. Yeah, for me, it was always no matter what the decision mm -hmm. will be, I want to be close to my family, of course, to my daughter, to Gabriela. So um, I ended up going to Brazil. So mm -hmm. I left everything behind. I went there. 
Uh, which I thought is super cool, you know? That's when I was cool. like, yeah, like, damn, uh, these two know what he's doing. <laughs> yeah. A goal of mine was always like working abroad, right? Yeah. yeah. And this is what's like, basically because of my daughter, I could f do that. So yeah, yeah. I think it's fantastic. Um, but anyway, so I got to Brazil at this time. I had uh, still a, a nine to five job in an agency. Mm -hmm. And I could do this job online. So even in Brazil, they allowed me to work there. For so you were kind of doing so, home office so, already yeah, yeah, before already. the pandemic. Three years ago, <laughs> I already did home office, so that's pretty cool. Uh, but I also knew um, that maybe this is not the most secure job because now I'm on the other side of the world. Maybe they find someone who could replace me. I didn't and know. it's local. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I, I just didn't know. We had not, also, yeah. I didn't know, and also the agent didn't know how, it, how it's going to work out. Yeah, yeah exactly. So I said, um, I need to find something that if we decided to live there in Brazil mm -hmm. for the rest of our lives, I need to have an income, right? And yeah. you know, the economy in Brazil, um, it's terrible, yeah. terrible. You cannot find a job. Yeah, when yeah. you find one, salary is miserable. Not good at all. So, um, yeah, online, online coaching. coaching. I already had a little bit of a side. Uh, so I have my side mm -hmm. business with an income. So I thought, okay, I'm going just to all in with this business and trying to scale it up. And um, yeah, this is what I did. And it was super freaking hard because I had my nine to five, yeah. a newborn, and I wanted to scale my business. So yeah, you had a lot like, to do at the same yeah, time. Yeah, it was like such a hard time to balance. Well, there was no balance. Let's <laughs> I also wanted to go to the gym, work out for myself, right? So yeah, um, yeah and a little sleep didn't make it any better from yeah. the baby waking me up. <laughs> there is so many things that I want to get into <laughs> for the podcast that basically all come from that. Um, uh, but one thing I had written down that I wanted to ask you is, for me, from the outside, it really um, seemed like from the point you've become a father, um, your business kind of exploded and you really got into online coaching. Um, do you think that's because you suddenly had a special niche and you made an experience that you could share? Or was it more because you were like, okay, I'm just going all, all in on that mm. or a combination? How do you think that has influenced mm. the growth of mm. your uh, coaching business? So I think... What happened is I, I knew I will become a father. I know I'm going to be in a different, to live in a different country. Mm -hmm. And this made me grow, you mm -hmm. know, like not physically because I'm still super small. <laughs> but <laughs> but your arms are big. <laughs> mentally, it was such a big decision. Um, it was time to take like ownership, mm -hmm. time to just like be there for, uh, just responsible for what I did, mm -hmm. be there for my little one, for, for my uh, girlfriend at the time. Um, and out of a sudden, if you become father, something in your mind, it just changes. You're no longer just independent, can do whatever you mm -hmm. want and free and so much free time and whatnot. Out of a sudden you feel responsible. Um, you have like, you need to provide. And I think you, my, my parents said the same way. They, they felt like when I become a parent, I grew so much, mm -hmm. in, like in terms of age, out of a yeah. sudden I'm an old man almost. Right? <laughs> Suddenly like, you're I, like I, a grown man. Yeah, <laughs> almost, almost like Not a this. kid anymore. <laughs> um, um, out of a sudden I'm a wise person. <laughs> <laughs> no, you, look, you just look at, at the world and things completely mm. different, different than before, right? So um, what made this entire thing do to me is I actually hired a business coach and said, okay, okay. I want to grow it. I need some help because if my clients, they want to reach a certain goal, they hire me and I can help them. Now I have a goal. I need someone to help me too. Only makes sense. I believe in coaches. Um, if I wouldn't believe in coaches, then I could do my job. Right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I hired sense. Um, a business coach um, that would help me out to scale my business. And the first experience was not that well. Okay. So uh, probably, uh, I don't want to speak against anyone because it is, it's a huge actually in the, in the fitness space. I mean, don't say the names. No, the, the thing is maybe because I had a full-time job and a baby yeah. and I wanted to scale, probably I couldn't put enough time into it to really grow the business. Yeah. So um, I stopped the program and said, no, sorry, it's not working for me. 
Um, but I already Had changed some one. things. No, I already did some from this mm -hmm. coaching program. I already posted more. I was more active. Mm -hmm. I already was more present on social media. And even two months later, I said, okay, now I'm having more, like okay. there's more interest, like people seeing me on social media and there are some requests about like helping me reaching their fitness mm -hmm. goal. So I knew something, it's actually working. Maybe it was just not dedicated enough. Maybe it didn't, um, you didn't give it enough time. Yeah. So something like that. So I thought, okay, um, I'm going to try it again, this time with another coach and, uh, that's what I did. And this time, like it just went all in. I said, mm -hmm. I said, okay, I'm going to dedicate every three minutes to, to that. I'm going to do whatever he says. Um, and this is my top priority, obviously next to family. Yeah. And uh, yeah, pretty quick, I had to tell the agency I worked for that I need to reduce the days I work for them. Um, just like two months later, I again contact them and say, sorry, it's not working. I'm, <laughs> I have such a heavy workload. Which is a good sign. Yeah, of course. Like, I mean, it shows you what's working, it's right? It's working, right? <laughs> um, and yeah, very quickly, actually now during quarantine as well, I think quarantine also contributes to the success because local businesses are not they're working they're anymore. They're shut down, yeah. And some, yeah, some people didn't go online. Mm. Um, on the other hand, you could also see like there's out of us on so many online coaches. So I can yeah. see both sides, right? Yeah. The local businesses are shut down. No local gym, no CrossFit, uh, no group classes. On the other hand, there's so many not so educated people who are out of some fitness coaches. Yeah. yeah provide their it's fitness a huge programs. Problem, right. um, so yeah, I had to stand out somehow. And I was the first time really, really confident because I had a story to tell. Because yeah. As you know, if it's just nutrition, if it's just training, it's just boring, right? It's, For it's, people, it's, it's very dry. Yeah. And you can, let's be honest, you can find everything on the internet. Yeah. YouTube is there. You can Google it. You can find everything. Um, but in the end, there's also so many um, uh, things to tell to do a thing in a certain way, yeah. contradicting at times, right? Yeah. This diet, this diet. Well, so you need to, all fighting you need each to, other. Yeah, you need to trust someone. You need to have someone. And since I'm a dad now and I have a story that people also find inspiring, mm -hmm. um, they can resonate to me. I'm, I'm saying, look, um, I'm now a, a father. I also have like these problems with time. I also yeah. know how it is to be get wake, woken up at time at exactly, nights exactly. like every two hours. I know how it is feeling, you know, that you don't have time to work out yet. Here I am with a family, with a nine to five, with a business, and I'm still in. Well, in you're looking shape. better than ever. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, so, uh, yeah, I had I had certainly adjust my methods, and I think, um, yeah, let, let's go into it. Because yeah, I mean that's what I want. What I wanted to talk about. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's a good segue yeah, yeah. because, like, I was like, damn, the dude is obviously putting re less time in now because he can't. <laughs> But uh -huh. he looks better than ever uh -huh. now. Like when I uh -huh. see your picture on Instagram <laughs> and on Facebook, like you're so clean, you're so buff. So I mean, super cool. So yeah, how has your training changed um, after you have become a dad? Mm -hmm. Because obviously you had to put less time in. Mm -hmm. So you probably had to be better in prioritizing, yeah. right? Yeah. So what are your top priorities mm -hmm. in, in mm -hmm. training? Um, so training, is, I think what, what has actually more changed is nutrition part. Okay. Because maybe even when, when we met or when I was so like almost obsessed with fitness. I, I was mean, counting, you were counting calories. Counting and calories. I knew my macros. I was like very strict. Yeah. Never had sugar like for years. It's sugar crazy, right? for years. <laughs> <laughs> cheat meals. No, I didn't need it. I also had no like... Desire. Need, no desire for that. Yeah, yeah. I didn't know how. If you have taste. a goal and if you want something, I, I, then I didn't know how chocolate tastes to be honest. So <laughs> it's water. crazy, man. It's crazy, right? Um, so out of a sudden, um, that yeah, was not I'm, feasible I'm anymore, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I, I had my. I have a bit of a actually a sad story about this because the first time when I was like in the first few weeks when I was a dad, I had like a binge attack, like I never had before, like. Yeah. 
It was at night, baby was crying, I was just like so stressed out and the next day I need to be at work. I was so stressed out, so I went to the kitchen and just ate everything I could find <laughs> and it was so crazy, like literally in, in Brazil it's extreme because uh, we were living at my mother-in-law's house uh -huh. and there's so much like cookies and... So you were eating sweets at the... Everything <laughs> I could find and I thought I need to eat everything and it was like... It's crazy. Uh, the unhealthiest thing ever. <laughs> probably, yeah. Did you, did I you didn't throw up? I didn't throw up. Uh, I think, uh, uh, yeah, I think once I did. <laughs> I mean, if you never <laughs> eat sugar and then you eat so much sugar, yeah, you must yeah. have feel like terribly sick. Yeah, no, no once. Like I had maybe three of these cravings in total, so it's not to the point where mm. I had like a... Not like a sickness, but just no, like the first just, time you were eating so yeah. much, you must have feel like, feel like it was sick so after crazy. like... I couldn't, I couldn't sleep, obviously, because obviously. you're so full and so bloated. <laughs> so it was a terrible feeling. And, um, but it made me realize what parents go through, mm -hmm. uh, what it means to have so much on you, so, so, so much pressure somehow. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, also how it feels to actually binge, like oftentimes, People will tell me they have and I could just relate. What is it, like binge what sugar? Why should you want sugar? Yeah, because <laughs> why? I, I never get it. Yeah. Um, so um, yeah, this this binge attacks obviously it happened only three times when he was super stressed out. But it was constant is my my sugar intake. Like and during the weekends in Brazil it's like huge. This family gatherings mm. all go together and Eat cakes. We have a lot of cake <laughs> yeah. and all day long. It's not only one hour lunch, oh, the entire yeah. day, there's like some sweets, you just go there. <laughs> and obviously, what do you do? Especially, I didn't, couldn't speak Portuguese very well, so I, what do you do when you feel uncomfortable, a bit anxious, and then you just eat yeah. in, in hope, it makes me feel better, right? Yeah. So, did you gain um, weight? Yeah, again, I, even overall in, in Brazil, it's quite a lot of, I think, almost 10 kilograms. Of, but I mean, it's muscle if I look at you now. It's, it's actually good <laughs> because, um, yeah, I, I was also, if I look back a long time, it was just like, I wanted to have a six pack and yeah. I had it all the time. If you look at my pictures, like since 2013, every year, six pack, six pack, six pack, it's like constant. Right? Yeah. And uh, the first time now probably ate way too much, but I could see, okay, it's actually turning into muscle if I okay. still work out. Right? Okay. So, so you uh, kept the six pack. Uh, I think, yeah, like, <laughs> not as defined, there's always like, a, a, I didn't have this huge yo-yo effect, yeah. but I certainly, for, for my standards, I could see, shit, I lost my six pack. Right? I have that right now, actually, right, right in that right. moment. Yeah. <laughs> for for, for other people, and everything. If, if, yeah, if I ask my fiance, oh, no, no, you're having perfect six pack, but I'm saying, no, for my standards, even <laughs> right now, because I had, again, transition phase yeah. we just came from brazil to switzerland obviously first few weeks you want to try all the foods mm -hmm. here and like i don't know and everyone and is cooking and for you yeah, and like exactly and we're living parents grandparents parents house <laughs> right now, so i'm just eating whatever yeah um but i can see my for my standards it's not as defined for other yeah. people yeah. you know yeah, yeah um so yeah i knew this oh this every feeling. weekend every weekend i'm going to have probably some sweets and i could be super strict. I tried it at first and said, man, no, I, I don't, I also want to participate. I want to have their piece of cake. <laughs> Literally, yeah. I, I want to have some sweets and celebrate. But that means I probably cannot or shouldn't eat like 400 grams of carbs every single day, the other day. So if I know I'm going to have very high carbs on the weekends, maybe I need to adjust during the week because as mm -hmm. we all know, you can compensate. You can yeah. eat one day a little bit more, the other day a little bit less. So my approach was then more on a low carb approach during the week mm -hmm. and then a bit higher um, throughout the weekends. And you did just did it by feeling. You I, stopped yeah, counting I, calories. I, absolutely, because um, I know mm -hmm. counting calories that works, but especially as a father, I, I don't I ask myself, do I want to live this lifestyle for the rest of my life? Prepping all my foods, not eating out a lot, um, counting calories. I said, no, let's be honest. I, I don't want to do this, even though it works. It's not something I want to do for the rest of my life. So I came up with, um, yeah, what I call diet templates. Mm -hmm. I created one for me. It's the same that I do for my clients. And it's a very simple protocol that says, okay, we have, for example, um, breakfast, lunch, dinner. Um, and depending on your goal, so 
Yeah. Let me make an example. We have a, a, a client who, a fat loss client, mm -hmm. there might be um, lunch, protein, vegetable and uh, carbohydrates. He goes to the list. I, I give them like mm -hmm. a list I also can use to, to my groceries. On the list you, you find just the various protein sources, mm. various carbohydrate it's sources. It's like chicken, tuna, and, yeah, written there, and, right? And it's so easy. I tell them you need to print it out, take it with you, whether you're on the go or in the restaurant, check the menu. And obviously you need a little bit of understanding. It takes a bit because you mm -hmm. need to know what is a carbohydrate or is a protein. Um, That's what, what I teach also, obviously, yeah, of course. Uh, to my clients. But this is so easy to implement and you don't need to bring all your Tupperwares all the time. Yeah. Right? And uh, the amount, so... Let's say we have that client at lunch, it's written, he's eating protein, carbohydrate and veggie. So he would decide to go for chicken, potatoes and Absolutely. tomatoes, for example, whatever. Absolutely. Then, but how much he eats of it, um, good, good he question. can, good he question. can choose or how did you do it for uh, yourself and how question. do you tell it to clients? So I actually put a uh, amount of grams because there is, I think, maybe two out of 25 clients there is those who want to track it so they're mm. on the safe side um, they can do it if they want but what I also do is I integrate some plate templates mm -hmm. so how how their plate should look like so they see okay half of it should actually be um, vegetable just a quarter should be maybe um, carbohydrates and mm -hmm. the rest protein something like okay. that so this way you can go in a restaurant, because in the restaurant you won't take your scale and put your food in there. <laughs> well, they're pretty weird. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, full transparency here. I haven't measured anything in three years. Okay. Nothing. I even didn't have a, a scale in, in present, yeah. so... Yeah. I mean, I never measured. I did, or I couldn't say I never measured. I did it for like four weeks. And then I was like, fuck that. That's too much work for me. Yeah, I don't I mean, like it. I mean, it works. It certainly works. And if you want yeah. to compete in bodybuilding, sure. So it's probably the way to go. You have to, you right? You have to almost. But, yeah. but for us that live like a quote unquote normal life, exactly. I think it's, uh, exactly. it's not the exactly. most sustainable way, right? Exactly. It's probably the extreme, right? And uh -huh. I almost see like the different levels of how let's put it this way, like um, how much you're into fitness or how mm -hmm. important it is to you. And most of the people are like, let's say, let's say level one. So they just need to move more. They need mm -hmm. to work out frequently two or three times a week They need to eat better, make better choices. Then there's the ones who will be the more aggressive, want to really look good at the beach body. Um, they might need to cut certain foods or go into mm -hmm. deficit, whatever. And then there's the obsessed ones that count calories and everything and uh, they use it almost as a religion right <laughs> um, and I was like that it was at this level three mm. and I went back actually I said okay this is like four hours of uh, like during the weekend for example Saturday Sunday I remember limitless I was there at least four hours a day probably yeah like training working out and uh, everything diet on point never any junk food and then I actually went back and said okay I don't want to I cannot do and don't want to do it anymore. Yeah. So I go back to, let's say, level two or even level one, where I say, okay, I need just to, to work out, follow the very basics. And this is also what I, what I want to teach uh, my clients because I, I'm not the person when it comes to someone wants to compete in, in bodybuilding or like hardcore dieting. Mm. I might be not the best coach because I also, I never competed myself, so yeah. I don't know exactly. I know how it feels if you have like super low calories and if you <laughs> shred it, I know. You it, competed it like at shit. the beach. <laughs> it looks like shit, I know that. So, uh, uh, but I don't want to teach anyone to, to go through this because it's in the end it's not healthy, right? Mm. So, and that, that's basically all the changes you did to the to oh. nutrition. You just started to incorporate like sweets in a healthy way so <laughs> let's say that you can be like oh, i need to enjoy it like the way most people uh, should uh, probably uh, do it uh. and you you stopped counting calories and somehow did that help you to improve your results um, or um, so training wise i also made some adjustments obviously because covid hit gyms closed mm -hmm. um and then i knew i'm when i cannot work out i don't need that much energy Looking back though, I almost 
always could find a way to work out most of the time even in the gym because you know brazil corruption and <laughs> stuff <laughs> you pay someone and you go in the back door yeah and, and the lockdown was um, super short there anyway no right now it's it's tough right now everything is closed oh, again yeah, okay. yes. uh, yeah. brutal but uh yeah I, I knew the gym owners and so i could work out still yeah, yeah. <laughs> um but obviously what it, what changed is i so one reason is family the one my business took a lot of time so i went in with a plan maybe even my my warm-up was shorter i didn't do a lot of cardio in the end mm -hmm. um, it's just like i go in do my things my quick workout 45 minutes and go back home mm -hmm. to support my family or work on my business or whatever so i was just like i had my plan i went in there it was actually good i didn't know a lot of people because as you know it's often blah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so um, i just went in did the workout and went back home um and uh yeah so you had to eat less i guess overall i think overall probably less yeah yeah at least because i i remember even now I, i'm coming back right now um i'm living at my parents house mm. and my mom remembers from from earlier she would buy or she would buy for me the groceries and there's like so much so many sweet potatoes so much <laughs> rice and she was waiting for me here like so i bought everything you knew i said oh maybe i'm not doing this anymore like <laughs> what do i need all of this like it's crazy so I, I'm, I'm still eating a lot for for a normal human mm -hmm. because i think uh yeah just because of the energy i mean you have a lot of lean and, body uh, mass as well yeah. um but I, I don't aim for let's say 450 grams of carbohydrates every single mm -hmm. day it could be that i reach this um especially when we go out or take away mm -hmm. now because go out yeah. is a bit different but then other days i'm fairly low just okay. in the morning some carbohydrates and then keep it relatively low so you're kind of cycling carbs off during the week Absolutely. and yeah. on the week also also it depends obviously because as you know you cannot just tell someone oh you need to reduce your carbs mm -hmm. Or because you need to know the goal, obviously. Yeah. So when I when I do these diet templates to my for my clients, there is those where they maybe have some carbohydrates in the morning and then in the evening some chocolate because they crave chocolate and that works mm -hmm. perfectly fine. Um, everything in moderation. And then there's other ones who want to gain weight and they have obviously all the times uh, mm. carbohydrates. Okay. Because they, they use it right. So it, it really depends. But for me um yeah i have to also have to be honest as said right now it's probably my diet is not 100 percent dialed in because mm -hmm. just like some other things that i need to sort out trying to follow just the basic mm -hmm. rules i'm having my diet template um but now i mean summer is just around the corner so yeah. i will hopefully reduce like my, my <laughs> so you uh, want to cut a little bit uh, yeah for sure for <laughs> sure yeah and then um yeah let's get a little bit more into the training because i mean i can tell from my own experience when i was four hours at the gym i could do everything you know mm -hmm. i had the time uh -huh. so yeah okay i'll do some heavy compound lifts and mm -hmm. then i do some whatever like hypertrophy work i can do some mm -hmm. metcons mm -hmm. maybe multiple ones mm -hmm. you know like it's just what I, and i can even practice some calisthenics and i had enough time you know uh -huh. it's like uh -huh. you're four hours there you can do everything yeah, that you want absolutely. and then when you try to compose it down to 45 minutes then that's I what i want to do ask in the beginning yeah, you have yeah. to prioritize um mm -hmm. so how do you or mm -hmm. what do you prioritize what do you think mm -hmm. is like the mm -hmm. the me or the most important thing to do mm -hmm. when you want to achieve your goals within 45 mm -hmm. minutes so how my gym sessions look like or my home gym sessions mm -hmm. i work mm -hmm. usually right here yeah. where i do the podcast um is most of the time a uh, main lift so mm -hmm. it's either like a squat that lift um, uh, i also consider like a dip weighted dip for example yeah, or a barbell or, row or, yeah, something, something like that, that. exactly uh, as compound and then i either do a circle training when i'm short on time mm -hmm. um or then just like a traditional let's say bodybuilding training mm -hmm. where i would uh, hit for example back and biceps mm -hmm next day um let's then say three by ten or something like that yeah exactly <laughs> um relatively the resting time is relatively low i just go through it because i know it's working i know it's what my body uses mm -hmm. to, to keep the muscle mass 
Um, and then in Brazil, what I often did, so in, in comparison to earlier, I would maybe warm up for half an hour, then I would do my, my workout, then I would go on a treadmill, then I would stretch. Um, I certainly, you, you don't see me in a, on a treadmill, never anymore. <laughs> I, 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 time. <laughs> I just go out for, for walks throughout the day. Mm. Um, early in the morning I do one, then I go out most of the time before lunch. I go out in the, in the afternoon with my little one, so mm. I can combine quality time and being active. And the same I did with uh, like home workouts, because if I go to the gym, I, I need to leave my my baby girl at home and my, mm -hmm. my girlfriend at home and maybe she also needs a break because I cannot support her when I'm at work or whatever. So I just did a like short and intense body weight workouts at home. Um, and by the way, most of, or many of them I recorded, they are mm -hmm. on my YouTube channel and you can see like my, my daughter, she's just mimicking me and tries <laughs> to do the stuff and for me, <laughs> It was such a good feeling, like it's my passion, I love working out. Mm -hmm. So I had actually two reasons, I knew it was just good for me, it's something different, like I do just 10 minutes workout with, with burpees and like mm -hmm. body weight uh, squats and stuff, push-ups. And then also that I can see that my daughter also has mm -hmm. pleasure in it and thus I already can like engage her and yeah. I just feel them like a good role model, a teacher, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. you know, it's just like such a good feeling uh, when I can do that with her and it's also what I love right now when I, when I set up this home gym here, mm -hmm. we take the, the weights, um, go out into the garden, and, uh, when I can combine fitness, which is my big passion and then my family and then I don't care when the, when the entire training is one and a half hours long because we can connect. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we, we go there to, to the slide. Um, my, my fiance works out here as well mm. because uh, she likes the setup better than going to the gym. Can be. Uh, yeah, know, not, moment not, everyone, just, not, not like a gym would be everyone. open at the, yeah, at the moment. Yeah. <laughs> but not everyone likes, likes gym, the gym setup. And yeah. We have privacy. We can work out as a family, ba basically. We can have a good time. We can mess around in between. Mm. Um, so we have fun. We get our do something for our fitness and it's good quality mm. family time. So I think it's just great. It is and it gives you the opportunity to get longer workouts in here and there. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> okay. I mean, this is super cool. And how then, for example, when you say you do those circuits, how do they look like? So do you follow a split routine or a full body um, workout routine mostly? No, I, I, I split it up definitely. Um, so then you would so, do like push pull on one day and you switch between yeah, those two exercises. I, um, when I when I came here to Switzerland, I just had two kettlebells, mm -hmm. um, so they just upper and lower because also mm -hmm. with kettlebells like the, the exercise is kind of limited. Mm -hmm. So they just um, upper lower. Then uh, mm -hmm. like next day maybe metcon or something for the abs, ten minutes just short. Mm -hmm. Then again upper lower. Right now I'm doing push pull leg, mm -hmm. one day of rest upper lower rest. So okay. five trainings a week, that's uh, what I'm aiming for. And yeah, that's the current current split. I, yeah, check it out. I also recorded it um, yeah, on definitely. YouTube. I mean, I'll link the stuff below and in the end of the podcast, we can definitely it's, also. It's actually, it's, it's nothing special. It's, it's straightforward. Mm -hmm. It's a traditional push pull leg split. Okay. Um, and yeah, it doesn't take me too long, 45 minutes, I'm done. Yeah, I mean, that's great. Yeah. And for your clients, I mean, obviously, not all of them train five times a week. Some do two times, some probably maybe more than five, who mm -hmm. knows. Mm -hmm. um, but in generally, the workouts you give them, is it very similar to what you're doing? Or do you adjust it a lot onto their goals? No, I, I, mm, I have some people who do this exact split I'm doing, mm -hmm. um, but not everyone has the same equipment, not yeah. everyone has the same fitness level, not everyone mm -hmm. wants to actually gain muscle. Um, so it's very, very different. Context okay. matters tremendously, obviously. Obviously, yeah. So um, what I ask every client, uh, because you mentioned some train maybe two times only, mm -hmm. what I ask for is three times or 30 minutes. That's the minimum. If someone's not willing to do that, I'm saying, sorry, you might be at the wrong address here. Okay. Because 
Um, although it's maybe possible to, to lose weight, we know it's possible to lose weight uh, without, without, working. without working out, right? <laughs> yeah. But uh, I want to encourage people to get active, to live a healthy lifestyle. So I'm telling them three times, 30 minutes should be doable. And I don't care whether you have three businesses and a family, it's doable. Because yeah, I mean, you I, prove I it. I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I, I think that makes sense because it's just like this is your minimum that you can guarantee that what you do works yeah so if it's less then you're like yeah you might be paying me money for something that you're not getting value of but if yeah. you're doing Most those three times time. 30 minutes yeah. and you're taking care of the nutrition like you can guarantee that it's going to work right and, so. and the other thing is um, if someone's not willing to take this time aside three times 30 minutes so that's one and a half hour per week and um, chances are he's also not taking the the meal plan seriously right because probably maybe yeah. you also need to take five minutes to prepare your food or yeah. like make groceries and uh yeah that also takes time even though like preparing food could be five minutes no no longer right uh -huh. but it, you need to do it yeah and if you're not willing to put in or yeah to take this time aside then don't do it with me do you help people with meals like because i think you might get a lot of clients as well they don't know how to cook <laughs> uh, or they don't know like how to prepare the healthy foods and what kind uh -huh. of meals are uh -huh. possible especially yeah. in, like they're like yeah. I've only five to ten minutes to prepare yeah. food what should I eat I cannot uh, go out and cook like you, salmon and I, fresh I, veggies I, I don't know to how to cook let's be honest but <laughs> I mean it's it's easy I'm, I'm not a chef I, don't, mm. I, don't, I couldn't cook you like a super fancy meal but mm -hmm. everyone knows how to like open like chicken breast and the vegetable and put it in the pan and heat it up. Yeah. I mean, it's so easy nowadays. You can find ready to go like mm. rice. Mm. You know, uh, Uncle Ben's is called here, I think. Yeah. Just like open it, heat it up, good to go. Um, Add some chicken. Else, yeah, there's like, even I have, if you, if you open the, the freezer here, there's so many packs of vegetable, frozen mm -hmm. ones. You can simply open, it's all cut already, so I don't even need to cut everything. Okay. In five minutes you have a meal, whether it's a fabulous yeah. meal or a bulking meal. It's yeah. so easy. Yeah, yeah. It, it definitely is, but I know some people struggle yeah, with it. Yeah, so. of course, of course. <laughs> so like, um, did, did, do you give them like those meal ideas and... Um, so, yeah, f for some, I have actually a recipe book um, that inspires people mm -hmm. to do some things out of there. Um, but I'm all for like, keep it simple. Mm -hmm. So, like, yeah, I, I, I literally did uh, another YouTube where I prepare a meal. And I mean, the recording took obviously so much longer than actually preparing it. Yeah. I wanted to explain it. So it ended up being 20 minutes or so, but the meal itself is done in, in five minutes. Um, and I just, yeah, telling you the same. I, I cannot cook either. I, I don't know, like, <laughs> things, but it's so basic. You don't need any skills. And, uh, no, no, for real, you don't need any skills to prepare those foods. <laughs> so Everyone like, can do that. It's I like an excuse that. when can, people yeah, say that. It's an excuse. <laughs> I really can ask my, my daughter, who was two and a half years old, she can put like some, something in the pan and put some salt on. It's like so easy. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And then one thing you also touched on that I think is, especially for your clientele, but also for many other people, um, a huge deciding factor is recovery and sleep. Um, I think many people don't sleep enough and if you have a little one then it's almost impossible <laughs> yeah. to sleep enough. So do you have some tips there? How do you per personally deal with it that you mm. still get the recovery that you need? Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, what would you suggest people that struggle with it mm. doing? Yeah. So yeah, let's face it, sometimes I don't get enough recovery. It's just truth, I think, and especially the first few weeks um, when, when you have your, when your baby you don't get a lot of sleep in and some days it just sucks so much because you're tired, you don't want to work. Mm -hmm. I remember it was like, um, should do some work for, for the agency at the, at the computer, obviously. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to sleep and I needed energy after energy to just like keep awake because it's like, mm -hmm. it, it's so crazy. And um, during the time, I mean, we already know as athletes or as like, sport enthusiasts that is so important to be recovered 
and yeah. then not even like the regular functions like walking is so demanding because you're sleepy right in yeah. army we face the same thing right? uh, we would fall asleep every yeah. three minutes <laughs> it's you, like you five minutes and break and then we sleep five minutes sleep right? deprivation is it's brutal it's so brutal yeah, yeah um and i mean there's just use common common sense i mean um, for some, that means go simple as go to bed earlier. Mm -hmm. If you if you watch Netflix until late night and <laughs> in the morning your your uh, daughter or your your baby wakes you up, um, maybe it's your fault. Then go a bit earlier to bed. I mean, there is no there is no pill that I mm -hmm. mean. Some people are just blessed. They use four hours of sleep, and I'm super jealous of them because mm -hmm. they literally don't need more sleep. But me, when I get like four, four hours of sleep, I get grumpy and yeah, irritated. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't function somehow, right? Mm. So um, in terms of recovery, I mean, diet is one thing. You need to mm. <laughs> make sure yeah, your of diet course. is right because it makes a difference. It makes a, a difference on your energy level mm -hmm. throughout the day. Um, but other than that, I, I, I don't do anything special. Um, to yeah, and the other hand is most clients. Mm. So there's two things. When they do you mean on the recovery of from the workouts or just in general? It's just in general, because, right? Yeah, because I just want to say most people. Um, uh, maybe you know my story. I was like heavily overtrained. Yeah. So I worked out every single day. And yeah. at some point, my body didn't recover, right? Because I, I think if you're, you're not an enthusiast, if you never did that, right? <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> you, you break your, your muscle all the time. You don't yeah. let them recover. At some point, you, you just, like, you cannot do it. It, it feels like, mm -hmm. probably like uh, Corona or something. Yeah, you know? yeah. It must feel like that. Just like you cannot get out of bed. You don't want to do anything because your body tells you you need a freaking break. And I remember mm -hmm. when I had this, I just let go, some more caffeine and <laughs> ready to go, right? Yeah. Um, so yeah, certainly listen to your body, um, include rest days. And I think what is super important is when you know you have like big projects, when you know you have, uh, you move from Brazil to Switzerland, mm -hmm. like I did, something like that, uh, maybe it's time to just reduce the workout, let's say from five times mm -hmm. to three times because you know you will have a lot of meetings, a lot of things to organize, um, the move by itself, travel, um, just reduce it and be aware of that, that you now have like other priorities that is more important probably. So yeah, you just need to be okay with that. So okay, mm. now for the next two weeks, I'm going to work out three times a week, I do full body, and then um, I can scale it up to five times again mm -hmm. when I'm ready. And I know it's very tricky, and especially as you, if you're a fitness enthusiast as we are, we want to work out all the time. And if we yeah. skip a workout, then shit, it's like all yeah, for nothing. Yeah, I feel right? like I can sleep at night when right. I haven't have worked out. Like, right, it, what it's a difficult. shit day. I didn't it's train. <laughs> it's very difficult, but um, uh, yeah. On the, on the other hand, it's very important that you still do something, right? Mm. You could other people who are maybe not so much into fitness, they would. Uh, Oh, I have now the move, so I'm not working out at all, which is mm. on the other side, right? Yeah, yeah. So it was so super important that you stay consistent. And even though it's done two times, I'm okay with mm. like, if they do two times when it's super stressful, and then we scale it up to three or four times, that's mm. okay. Um, other than that, I mean, I ask my clients whether they have uh, how much sleep they get. And mm -hmm. a simply reminder, when they, when they say four hours on average, a simple reminder that say, look, you know how important it is maybe you want to increase it to five or what exactly is going mm. on that you're so low and that make they think about it and um, sometimes it's silly because they go out because of that they, they don't get enough sleep yeah. is it really worth it for me not but um, for them, maybe. It's, it's their <laughs> life yeah if it's worth it then it's okay um but i think i think there's like simple things you can do in order to get enough, enough mm. sleep in um I mean, what I hear is for you, it's mostly about prioritizing it, right? Yeah. So you need to I mean, just I, like prioritize it higher than Netflix and then here. I mean, I also know I could work until 11, 12 p.m. Mm -hmm. without a problem because I have to work ethic. Mm -hmm. But I also know at some point my concentration and my focus will decline. I will not be able to do my stuff as good mm -hmm. as I wanted. So I'd rather say, okay, 7 p.m. now family time. 
um, have something else on my mind, I can enjoy time with them, then I go to sleep at let's say 10.30 and next time I'm fresh again and ready mm. to go. So I nowadays rather work a little bit, or this is actually also my goal, I work a little bit less, but use this this time uh, more efficiently. More effi yeah, exactly. Yeah, it makes sense. That's the same way I see it with working out. I do rather a little bit less, but I go, go hard, right? Yeah. Do you have a workout plan right now also, like you have everything structured, you know, like today, today I'm going to do this and then next week I'm going to do it again and I overload it in, so you can mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. so just like, I mean your clients, you obviously give a workout plan mm -hmm. and they know exactly mm -hmm. what they do mm -hmm. with it in the gym. Mm -hmm. Do you do that for yourself yeah. or are yeah. you more like today? No, absolutely, because I cannot expect something from my client I do not do myself. It's mm -hmm. like like hypo, hypocrite, right? Like yeah. this is the same way um, I'm telling my clients to walk 10,000 steps a day. Um, for me, it's most important that I do this as well, but I cannot tell them to do something I don't even do myself. Yeah. So definitely, I have my uh, diet template, I do I get my daily steps mm -hmm. in, I drink the three liters, everything um, I tell them because it's really practice what you preach. Yeah, um, well, I mean, for the workouts, it, it depends and on the goal, right? Yeah, if your goal is just obviously. to have fun in the gym and you yeah. have the knowledge yeah. that you can be like, oh, to, I mean, that's often how I train. I know it's like, today is, I do back and, let's say I do back and legs, for example. And then, but the exact exercise that I'm gonna do, I'm deciding at the gym, freestyle, yeah. Yeah, a little yeah. bit freestyle, right? Yeah. But if your goal is to really build muscle, yeah, obviously yeah, you need to have the progress, progressive yeah. overload and everything yeah. like those concepts in place. Uh -huh, so you need the, uh -huh. the, the workout plan. That's no, why I'm asking. Yeah. No, it's a good question actually. I have a, a workout program that's correct. Um, I have to admit, I don't follow it 100% all the time, mm -hmm. but there's a, not the fun aspect, more like when I realize my body doesn't function that well, meaning maybe recovery or sleep was not that good, or it just, there's days I don't feel great. We all mm -hmm. have those yeah, days, I mean, right? Of course, yeah, So I still do the workout, but with less intensity, and then I go, uh, I trust the workout, so I don't do like a heavy compound lift mm. that day, obviously. To make it more of a deload so day. If I have um, two leg days, one day at least I want to go heavy on, mm -hmm. on, the, on the squats, and then the other day, it would be some, I don't know, Bulgarian split squats, something mm -hmm. easy, very lightweight. Um, so I can say afterwards, I've done it, you can make the mm -hmm. tick, but what's obviously not the best worker. Yeah. But you really like, you you program your workout, you have like a six week cycle and you try yeah, to yeah, follow it as the, much as The thing as is, if I don't, then I will, I will probably do too much. Okay. Like historically, I'm, I have this history of overtraining mm -hmm. and I know if I don't have like a structure I will just do way too much probably yeah like if I if you give me if you would put me in a gym and say now you have three hours to work out I would just do everything like you know <laughs> I couldn't stop probably because yeah. it's still um it's my, a playground my passion is a, yeah. yeah and I just like actually the the, the act of working mm -hmm. out the process also so I, I might do way too much and so this time if i have a plan i know um what is what is the right dose for me mm. and uh yeah this is why i have it mainly i mean it makes a lot of sense yeah. and as, i also i think for reaching specific workout goals like you need to have a plan there's a reason Absolutely. that every athlete has a plan right <laughs> so um one last question that i was coming up with in the in the discussion before is you never skip a workout entirely if you didn't <laughs> sleep. So let's say you had a night, you just slept three hours. Mm. Um, do you still hit the gym and move or do you say like, no, with that little sleep, the best for my body is to actually <laughs> no, rest? It, it happened. So in the beginning, I would push through. I would mm. literally push through, take a pre-workout and push through the workout, even though it would feel like crap. Sometimes it even turned out to be a decent workout because you had enough pre-workout, <laughs> maybe, <laughs> or just the fact I made it there. Mm -hmm. I, I did something and I feel okay afterwards. Mm -hmm. Obviously, it never will be one of the best workout no, ever. Never. But um, yeah, no. When when I really feel like I can sit down and my eyes like close, close then it's I know um, I, I rather don't go. Uh, now it's a bit uh, 
trickier obviously because I have the gym right here so it takes me two minutes to go here um, when I would have to drive to a gym I would think twice should I really go mm. or not now I feel almost there is this risk of pushing through again right mm -hmm. um, but yeah I think it's experience mm -hmm. um, and maybe I'm a bit wiser yeah. so yeah I, I know when to take it easy and just like say okay not today maybe not the best idea to work okay. out. But then, I mean, your advice to yourself would be like, dude, I didn't sleep, I feel like shit, I should not work out, but you struggle like with going no, through for, it actually. For, for me personally, it would be listen to your body and mm -hmm. take a day off when your body needs it. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, it's Don't use it advice. as an excuse. It's, it's not the same advice I tell anyone mm -hmm. because most of the people have the opposite problem. They're feeling, oh, I'm not feeling 100%. Maybe I skipped today <laughs> for, for like, I don't know. <laughs> They're like, I only eight. slept seven and a half hours yeah. instead of eight. <laughs> this is, this is so how it works. That, right? that workout's going to be wasted. <laughs> no, when, when I skip it, it's literally like, I know my brain fog and all yeah. body aches and whatnot. Um, but for the majority of people, it, um, come it's on, better to push it, through. Yeah, push through. Because like, more right. often than not, you... Especially when you, when you let's say, do three workouts per week and now we skip one we're at two which is like one third less right um what you could do is it's just move like it to the next day right the next day this is a good option actually yeah. and i'm okay with that um this i uh, actually allow my clients to do so, um, <laughs> i mean it could be when you enjoy the weather right now you go on a hike or mm. on skis and then you move the workout to the next day and think okay great job because you, you went out you did get your steps and you mm. went skis which is also sports Love that, do the workout next day, absolutely no problem. But uh, the other thing is then just saying, oh, um, I skip it because, I don't know, went to, to bed late, had to watch the last episode of whatever. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, whatever. Yeah. Yeah, and then, so definitely makes more sense to yeah. like ensure that you get enough work in and yeah absolutely. if you only work out three times a week then recovery from workouts should not be your problem yeah, absolutely um so yeah i think we've covered a lot and was very informative and it was a lot of fun man. Had a lot of good luck <laughs> with good, time. good, time. With good uh, time um if people want to find more about your content watch all the youtube videos or if they need a coach where can they find you <laughs> Um, so I am trying to be everywhere <laughs> on the platforms uh, right now on, on Instagram and on Facebook, um, Gym Performance and on YouTube, also just enter Gym Performance, you will find me. Um, I am also experimenting with TikTok, I'm not a TikTok star yet, but also there, you do dances? Gym Performance. Um, I think I have one dance. <laughs> I feel super weird just pointing at these text boxes. <laughs> but I think the dance one did actually quite well. <laughs> um, and then gymperformance.ch, my website. Um, yeah, so I'll do LinkedIn on my personal name, Marty Blattler. Yeah, and if you want to get more information, just hit me up on social media. I'll go get in contact. Awesome. And one last, one last thing that I ask um, almost any guest that's a little bit off topic, I guess, but do you read what are books that you would recommend listeners to read? Um, so I am huge, I think like you, on, on self-improvement. Mm -hmm. And I have like all my books. I, ha I don't read like every day like I probably mm -hmm. should. But I have a few books that made an impact on, on my life that I sometimes like to quote. Um, uh, the recent one is, uh, for example, the How to Not Give a Fuck, I think. Do you know this yeah. one? It's a relatively new one. This I really enjoyed. Um, Mastery is another one. Um, I recommend them to clients when they ask me, obviously, but I don't tell them. <laughs> um, you need to read it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, um, so yeah, the books I read are almost always self in the self improvement area um, because I'm, I'm huge on it, like you, all the podcasts. Yeah, so you're more a po podcast listener. Yeah, all the time. If I go out and go for walks, I'm in the car, always having a podcast yeah. on. Yeah. I always feel like 
if I'm driving a car and I'm listening to music, I'm wasting time, you know? <laughs> I'm yeah, like, it's a bit like that, right? It's like, it's a wasted I mean, car ride. Yeah. <laughs> Could have been so no, productive. If you can go from A to B and learn something at yeah. the same time, um, then that's great. I also enjoyed, had a huge impact, um, the, I think, great, no, Awake, no, something like Warrior Within. I can't remember the book. I read it. It's more about, I think about the uh, um, warrior's arm. mind. Yeah, it's like about army guy. I think that uh, uh, from from I, I don't remember the name. Willock, like the, the this is also a good one. It's also a good okay. one. <laughs> <laughs> this uh, owner take ownership. Yeah, ownership, yeah, oh yeah, that's the name. Yeah, yeah, something yeah, exactly. like that. It's also fantastic. Yeah, but um, yeah, I can. I can There's a lot. We, we have four books already. That's enough, <laughs> I think. <laughs> Yeah. So yeah, thank you so so much, Martin. It was a lot of fun, good times, and yeah, thank you so much for having me on. Yeah, thanks a lot. Thanks for interviewing me. Had fun. See you next time, guys. Thank you. <laughs> so that's it for today. Thank you so so much for tuning in. It has been a real pleasure. Um, if you enjoyed the show, please make sure to leave a review below, telling me what you liked about the show, and also let me know how I can improve it. I'm always striving to make it better. And um, if you want to know more, then head over to my social media channel, to Instagram or to YouTube. You'll find me on pt.lucas. Also, you'll find all the links below in the description of the show. So yeah, thank you so much for tuning in and until next time.